Hey guys, so in this video we're just going to set up our project directory and structure and maybe a simple express server just to get things started. Alright, so first things first, we're going to make a directory and I'm calling it Mern Boats. And then we're going to open up in Visual Studio Code. There we go. Let's make things bigger really quick. And then I'm gonna actually change my settings so that it's easier to see on video. Zoom level to zero. There we go. Now everything, the text is bigger. All right, let's close that out. All right, and let's see, open up our terminal with control backtick. And let's see what we need to do. We initialize git, git init, and then we're also gonna add a git ignore file. Um, there's this nifty little website called gitignore.io, and you can hide files from your git project and your git repository. So stuff like your your operating system. I'm using Mac, and your text editor. And then we're going to be using a node project. So there. <clears throat> and click create. And with that, these are all the files that are basically useless or unnecessary to save in a Git repository. Which is a lot, but we're just going to copy everything and add a git ignore file. So touch dot git ignore. And then if you're on Windows, instead of touch, the command is start. Is it start? No, it's touch. Opening stuff is start. But that aside, um, paste, save, and just to check, um, VS Code actually hides files or darkens it so you know that they're hidden from your repository, like my settings. All right. And then our project structure is actually going to be, um, we're going to hold two servers, the server and the client side um, in this project so that in your, whoa, Domino's? What the hell? Um, so in your repository, you have a place to hold both sides of your full stack application. So let's make a directory. <clears throat> um, call it server. And then cd into the server and let's clear this um so so far nothing there so we're gonna create a npm or a node project so we're just gonna do an npm init and it's gonna ask you some questions so we're just gonna click through this um my name is kelvin Yes. <clears throat> and there's your package JSON. So this is basically telling Node <coughs> oh, damn. Uh, what your project does. So I'm gonna like, kill that because we don't we're not gonna use testing. At least not for now. Um yeah, that looks, that looks good. So in your server, we're gonna create our entry point, which our package JSON is calling index.js and yeah that's fine let's just do that index.js <coughs> so console log hello world node index.js and there we go our node server is well not the server, but our node project is initialized. Let's actually add, let's actually make this into a server. So we are gonna, let me clear this. We're gonna add um, npm install. We're gonna add express. And express is just a little dependency that makes creating servers much easier. So 
We don't have to do it from scratch. And while that's installing, this might take a while. Or not. And with that being installed, you can see our dependencies express is now there. And then the, our package lock is everything that express depends on, so all of its dependencies. And that's going to be hold, held in the node modules folder, which has a lot of stuff. So I actually recommend not going in here because it can be frightening. So let's just close all of that and start our server, so, or create our server. So we're going to import express require express <clears throat> and then the convention is to call your server app. Um, I don't know why, but we're just going to go with it. <clears throat> so here app is a variable that is an instance of express and then at dot listen we'll start our server um actually i'm going to give it a port i'm going to store the port in a variable so uh as a side note you could basically give any number above 1000 for your port um anything under 1000 actually is um used by your computer, so best not to use that. Uh, I'm going to go with 4,000. And add a space here. Okay, so we're going to listen on port 4,000. And we're going to add a console log just so we know it's starting. I'm using backticks for a template literal. So server started on port port and that <clears throat> that is that's a server. So to run it, we just do node index.js and it's running. Uh, we can't actually test this yet because the server is not doing anything. So let's just add the, the usual hello world. So app.get slash uh, request response as dot send hello world. Now when we start our server, it's actually doing something because uh, if we go to localhost at this port, it will actually hit this endpoint. Um, the slash means nothing after the URL. And this is what we should get back. So, going to our browser, this is a localhost. What number did I get? 4000. So, 4000. And that's our hello world. <clears throat> Which is nice and dandy, but this server is actually going to serve a purpose other than just sending us text. Um, we're going to be using our client to communicate with the server, and our client's going to expect a certain type of data. Uh, it's actually going to be JSON data. And JSON is basically just JavaScript objects. So inside this object, I'm going to. Actually, I don't like that. I'm going to. Still do a hello world, but this time as a JSON object or a JavaScript object. So we do that again, and now we have hello world, but as actual data. All right. Now what? Let's actually create an error handler. So the way Express works is that almost all of Express methods like get and even use is expecting a middleware function. And a middleware function is basically this this function here. And most of the time you will see request and response, but it actually takes three um, parameters. And the next one is next. Um, next is usually omitted because 
people don't do anything with it. But for errors, it's actually really important. So let's just implement a, um, a 404 error. So not bound. So <clears throat> there's no route that we could send it to. Instead, we're just going to send it to uh, a request handler. So request, response, and next. <clears throat> Create a function here. And let's see. Uh, we're going to make an error. So error, uh, new error with a message not found. We're also going to give the error a status code that everyone knows as 404. And with that error, we're going to actually call the next function, sending in that error. And then finally, we have to have a middleware. Technically, this is an afterware, because it runs after every, <coughs> every other request. And this is the final endpoint um, that uh, Express will hit before before your server crashes, if, if it ever gets to that point. Which hopefully it doesn't, because that would be bad. Response and next. And so the error is being sent here, and it goes here. And the rest of the parameters are basic express um, parameters, I guess. I guess that's what you would call it. So in here, we're going to do a res.status. Um, status, if you don't know, is a function that gives the status code. Uh, what do I call it? Error.status. So it'll be error.status or 500. And 500 is the error code for something really went wrong. So yeah. And we're going to send <coughs> a JSON data back saying error is error. Actually, error message, because I don't want to get too messy. Um, do, 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 do. I think that. Actually, if it doesn't have a message, we just, we just say something went wrong. And with that being said, let's kill the server and rerun it. And let's go to an endpoint that doesn't exist, so anything. Error zero. Well, that's not quite right. Uh, did I do something wrong? Let's see. Oh. Is it this? I used the wrong or. That's a, that was a different language. I oh, have to kill the server, start it again, send. There we go. Error not found. All right. So now we have a functional server that has a single endpoint that does Hello World, as well as an error handler here. So at any endpoint that's not recognized, it will go here and sends the error to next. And then at the final endpoint, it'll go here and send back a JSON data or a JSON object with the error message, and as well as the error code, error status code. Okay, in the next video, let's actually um, do something else, or let's make this server actually do more stuff. Yeah. <laughs>